Every single year, there's a pretty big update made to the Mac OS operating system. And this year we've gotten Mac OS Ventura, which like pretty much all of its predecessors doesn't really change a whole lot about the Mac and Mac OS experience. But in this video, I wanna talk about a few key changes and updates and features that I personally use every day. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So the first thing I wanna show you is Spotlight. There have been some improvements made to it. It's a bit more powerful than before. Now, a quick keyboard shortcut to bring up Spotlight, if you didn't already know, is Command and then Spacebar. That's gonna bring it up straight away. And if we want to actually use Quick Look, and rich results within Quick Look. So let's say you wanted to find out how old a particular celebrity was. Let's say Tom Holland as an example. So if I type in Tom Holland age here, it's actually gonna show me the Wikipedia result and that's a rich result. So it's just gonna get that information straight from a particular website and just spit it out right here in Quick Look. And if I go down and highlight that and press the space bar, it's just gonna straight up bring that page uh, and bring it up in a little bit more detail so that you can now see a little bit more about this particular person. Uh, you get his social media pages, some web pages, and a little bit more information about him here. And this also works for a ton more stuff. So let's say, for example, I type in population of Dubai, for example, you can see 3.3 million there. I can come down, I can press the space bar, immediately get more access to more information about this particular topic. But I think one of the best new features of Finder is image search. Now image search is really cool because it uses information from your images that are in photos or messages, notes or Finder. And it enables searching by locations, scenes or even things within the images like text or maybe a dog or a car. So for example, if I type the word cat into my spotlight window, and I scroll down here and click show more where it says photos from apps, you can see that it's actually gonna show you all the pictures of that cat, for example. So this is obviously my pet cat. And if I click on one of these photos and press the space bar to do a quick look, it's gonna bring up those photos straight away. Here's another one and just works really good. Now, it does work for other things. So if you wanna search for a car, for example, or a particular place that you've traveled to. So I went to Thailand earlier on in this year and if I type in Thailand, come down here to photos from apps. Again, it's just gonna show you all of these images from and photos and videos and whatnot from that particular place. So right there is a street market in Thailand. Here's a picture of a breakfast we had one day. So just a really, really powerful feature all around. Moving on, if you like to play any kind of Apple Silicon games, there's a new feature called the Metal Performance HUD. Now this is a new feature introduced with macOS Ventura and it allows you to monitor gameplay performance and things like FPS and memory usage. It's supported on native Apple Silicon games like Resident Evil Village and also Rosetta 2 games, but not OpenGL or OpenCL. But if you want to enable it for native Apple Silicon games, here is how you do it. So first of all, go to your applications folder and then you wanna find the native Apple Silicon game that you want to enable it for. You wanna right click, then you wanna go show package contents. You wanna go into the contents. You wanna select and then right click on the Mac OS folder. And you wanna go new terminal at folder. Then you wanna type in export in lowercase space, capital MTL underscore HUD underscore enabled equals one. And then you wanna press the return key. And then you wanna press full stop forward slash tab. And that's going to essentially tell that line of code to execute on this folder. And then you wanna press the return key on your keyboard. And as you can see in the top right hand corner there, we get access to the metal performance HUD. It'll tell you a couple cool things like the resolution, the hertz of whatever screen you're using, and also the FPS, min, max, and GPU, and memory usage. If you wanna see a full video of me using this and testing out various M1 MacBooks playing that Resident Evil game, I will link that video down below. Now, moving on, we get some more updates to the live text feature. So, for example, if you're using a video now, you can actually just pause the video and just copy any text that you see within that video. So, for example, if you're a student and you wanna copy text from a lecture or a PowerPoint or something that you're watching online. If you're in Safari, you can actually come down here and you can see this is a video for, this is an economics video and I've paused it and you can see that the cursor actually changes when I hover over the text here. And I can actually come in here 
and copy this entire thing. And then I can now paste this in my text editor or Word document of choice, and it's all going to appear there. But if I close down Safari and come into Chrome, you can see that it actually doesn't work. So it really does depend on the actual browser you're using, uh, which is really annoying. As usual, most of these really cool features only work when you're actually using what Apple intends you to use, in this case, Safari. Um, so you can see sometimes it'll work. I think it just changed there a little bit, but you're just not really gonna have a good time here. Now, a potential workaround to this is if you download that particular video, and open it up with the QuickTime app, you can see I now have the option to actually copy and paste all of this text within the video. Now, just before I go into some more really cool features of macOS Ventura, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you've probably seen us use a lot of really cool apps and tools in some of our videos. And you can get access to these and 230 other apps through a subscription with Set App. It takes away the pain of having to look up, compare, and buy all of these apps separately. For example, Curio is your screen-free way to keep up with the world. Listen to news and insights from over 50 of the world's most trusted publications. Expertly curated, professionally narrated, and with no ads. Just browse for a news article you'd like to listen to, for example, this one from Wired, and either add it to your playlist or just play it straight away. And you can use Curio on your Mac desktop or your iOS device to listen on the go. So check out Setapp using the link in the description below to access all of your favorite apps, including Curio, with no ads, no extra costs, regular updates, and more. Now, getting back to Mac OS Ventura, you've probably seen something called Continuity Camera. Sure, desk view and using your iPhone as a webcam is cool, but I think what I'm about to show you is something that you maybe haven't thought about, and I think it might actually blow some of you away. So if you open up QuickTime Player and then come up here to File, New Movie Recording, it'll generally default to your webcam straight away. But if you come down here and click on the little arrow icon next to the record button, you can actually select your iPhone camera. And if you do that, it's actually going to change the input to your iPhone. Now, if I flip my iPhone around into portrait mode, you can see that this is basically going to work exactly like a webcam, a better quality webcam. Now, just give me one second and I'll just try and demonstrate the true power of this feature. So this is a really cool feature because you can actually set up your iPhone on a tripod, for example. You can preview everything on this really, really big screen here. And you can actually then record directly from your iPhone into the internal SSD or external SSD of your Mac and bypass whatever storage is on your iPhone. And for most models, that's pretty limited. So for example, if you wanna get into making YouTube videos or you wanna record some kind of talking head thing for a job application or to send to a friend like a birthday message, this is just a really, really cool and powerful feature that allows you to record a little bit better quality video. So let's also talk about the Mail app because I think this particular app has been really lacking over the past few years, especially if you have a Google account. Now, if we come in here and I reply to this particular email, uh, and then I'm gonna hit up here, next to the send button, if I drop this down, I can actually schedule this to send. Finally, I know, right? Like it's a very, very basic feature and pretty much every email client has had this for the last 10 years. Now Apple has finally decided to bless us with this feature. Thank you, I guess. Um, so if you come down here, you can send at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. on a certain day, it's Saturday right now. So obviously this is going to intelligently suggest Monday, or I can come down here to send later and I can send it pretty much whenever I want. Now, if I do send this particular email and I want to undo it, you can see down here, there is actually a blue button that says undo send. And if I click that, it's actually going to do exactly what it says, basically undo that email. Now you'll also be able to set reminders. Now for me personally, I like to operate on what's called inbox zero. So if an email comes in, I'll action it or I'll allocate it to a folder or I'll just archive it. But for those of you who don't want to do that, or for those of you who want additional functionality, you can right click on an email now, you can come down to remind me, and let's say for example, you want to remind me about this email tomorrow, you can click that, and this will actually send you a notification tomorrow, it'll pop up and move itself to the, to the very top of your inbox, 
and you'll be able to action that email at whatever date you've selected. Now, this next feature is a pretty basic one, but again, just like the features we saw in the mail app is long overdue for macOS. Now, it is the clock app. So if I open it up here, you can see that we finally get access to, again, really basic features that have been available on the iPhone, for example, for like 15 years. So you get the world clock, you can come down here, you can add different clocks here. Uh, you also get an alarm, so you can set this up. Um, you can add this, whatever you wanna add there, you can add it in. Uh, you get the same functionality as your iPhone, basically. And you've got the stopwatch feature, which works, again, exactly like an iPhone, or the timer feature. Now, this is really handy because I know a lot of you guys might like to cook, with your MacBook sitting on the table there watching some movies or whatever. And you can now actually just have this up on your MacBook running on a big wide screen while you're cooking, for example. I know that's what I use it for, but I just thought I'd show you this feature because I know some of you are going to use it. Now, moving on, let's talk about system preferences and a couple of extra things that you get within system preferences. Now, uh, the appearance has changed quite a lot and I know a lot of you may not like this, especially because the old version of system preferences was basically unchanged for like eight years. I personally think if you just spend five to 10 minutes getting used to this, it is a better layout. Everything is sort of grouped together uh, and it's just on the side here. It's on a sidebar instead of just randomly grouped in little app icons, which I didn't like. You can also come in here and search for individual things. So for example, night shift, you can type that in, it's gonna come up straight away. But one feature I really wanted to show you is something called background sounds. And if we come in here and click on this, this is a really cool feature because if you have medical issues like tinnitus or you just prefer some kind of background noise in the background while you're working or trying to sleep or read, whatever, you actually come down here and you can actually turn background sounds on. And as you can hear in the microphone, this is actually playing a rain sound. So I can come in here and I can actually change this to balanced noise bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, or stream. So this is a really good feature because if you have tinnitus or anything, or you just like these background noises while you're working, you don't have to go onto YouTube or pull up a web browser or a phone or whatever. You can just bring it up straight in macOS. I think that's a really good addition from Apple. Apart from that guys, hopefully you enjoyed these little tips and tricks within macOS Ventura. Any questions, let me know down below. Apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.